Hello, this is Max Drake. I just want to talk to you about um, the time capture thing. I, I did this one with all the hotkeys, which was a time capture where you can actually download this one here. It's an executable. Um, uh, I'm going to choose this project. You can choose your own project that you do. I'm going to allocate two hours to it, and then I'm going to add make a note one. Um, the uh, note from last meeting written up or whatever and then I go okay with that one this gives me a little bit of toast down here which comes up and tells me that this has been done um, uh, and then it goes and appends it to a file it's all very slow because uh, I've got the OBS running at this point in time so I wanted to see if I could do that inside a web browser so I started to look on so on on just search and see what was out there I came across this one here which I think is a very lovely one um, which just tells the time so you can actually have a timer that just counts up all on its way and just does its counting and you can pause on it and then you can restart again you can actually have an alarm thing so that you can set it for however many minutes uh, or things that you want to do and you've got countdowns as well so I don't really know that I suppose the, the alarm clock does one thing and the countdown does something else but you can't save this anywhere and it just basically counts the nice thing which you do like is actually gives an update on the tab as it goes along um, it will give a live update but if you go over to a different project you'll see it actually stays there and it updates at a specific interval um, which I think is quite nice. Now I took this from uh, uh, codebox.com which was a simple JavaScript stopwatch and it actually had some HTML attached to it and some CSS. I just stripped out the CSS because I'm rather interested in the functionality of it and I tried to replicate what I had um, inside my little um, time capture tool that I was doing there in that I wanted to write information to a file. Now, it's just, if you're giving it to somebody else, depending on how uh, computer savvy they are, do you want them to set up a database or do you want them set up um, that it has to send it up to somewhere in the cloud or something, or they actually had to find some linkages that they've got to do. I suddenly thought, let's just make it simple. Just go and send it to a file. That's all I want to do. So it's something on your PC. It's something you're totally in control of and you're not messing with actually uh, links or FTTPSs or anything like that. And you're not worried about whether it's online or offline. So this was another thing that was quite important to me. I didn't want, I wanted it to be able to use because a lot of people use their browsers an awful lot um, to actually just have that information there. So what I've done is on the tab, I've actually tried to put the project. Now the project codes that I've got are just on I've just made some up and they're hard coded in here at the moment but you could go in here because basically you take this stopwatch one and you take the JS and the HTML file so you have two files and you can make this happen so you just run it and uh, uh, we'll demonstrate that shortly um, what I wanted with the date and it's reading the date off the computer here so it's just got the date on there I could actually put the time and maybe it's not a bad idea to do the time so that when I actually save this sorry we can start the countdown now so this is just doing a counter coming through here and it's counting so what I can actually do is I can put a note um, this is right up of minutes we'll say and if we go save now this is the oddy bit here it doesn't just save it to a file it has here is a download link so what it's actually doing in here is it's saving it into this uri content data application optic stream and then it's got this encoded content which is basically all of these other things that i'm actually cramming and cramming into that file and then it makes a link that you can link. So what's actually happening here? So I'm just going to use Control Shift I in Firefox. I'm not too sure what it is, just to look at our um, developers tools. And if we go into storage, I'm just going to now. I'm just going to refresh this. Now this is the negative that I've got at the moment. If I refresh this page now, it, it refreshes the timer, but it doesn't set this back to zero and it doesn't 
clear this box here out. So I've only taken it so far, I've got the components in there and I've got the process of sending it to file. But what I want to draw your attention to here, based on the story, based on this page here of this page of the browser, I've got session storage, local storage, and an index DB. So this is to do with um, progressive web apps, whereas if, you get, if, if you're online in an app that you've got, which is a web-based app, that this you can define as a web-based app in a way, uh, and you're storing stuff, as you go through a train tunnel and you've got no internet access, if you just had something that was totally live, it wouldn't work. But what a progressive web app does is it pulls things into local storage. So a particular page can actually have a whole lot of information to do with that. Um, and I'm not going to go through and analyze that. At this point in time, I was playing with this before, but I've sort of forgotten how I've done it because I haven't been playing with any of the web stuff just recently. But it stores some of the information in here. So when I do, I'm just going to go and start this again and it'll do this and if I go save so we've got three seconds on here and I go and hit this download link first of all as I hover over that you see this black line coming down here and it actually says data application octet stream and then it's got the information uh, that I've actually put inside there so if I go hit to there the first thing it does is it says um, save the file so do I want to save the file or do I want to open it the other thing that I've done in the file is I've made the file name, the date, the project code, and the time in the text. So if I actually open that up that text, the only thing that I'm going to get more than that information is just what information I put in as the note information. Now another thing with the note information through here is if I just carry on writing, I'm just going to cancel out of that at this point in time. If I just carry on writing uh, where uh, the meeting was on. Now, if I do that, it's just continually done. Now, I can uh, just stretch this box here, and you see that it's actually all on one line. And when I actually save that, it will actually show it all on one line. But if I actually go and break that line into a second line, the nice thing in the file is that it actually puts all the information and then has a break line. So if you've got a whole load of other bits of information, you can actually break it down and see it read quite well, which my other one doesn't do at this point in time. So here I do a save. So the nice thing is it's got my total countdown at that point in time, and I've got a save, and I've got a save by date. Now one thing which I'm thinking about here, so if I'm in a date one here, it's going to do that, and if I just save the file at this point in time, it's going to save it. I'm just going to do another save, and it's going to read another different time because it's now updated, and you see this is 146. So I just want you to bear that in mind because I'm going to open this so that we can actually see what's in that file. And I just want to highlight how it's slightly different from what I've got in, in, in the uh, other project that I was doing. <coughs> so I can get all the components on here and I can do this. And the nice thing with this um, here, so, oh, <coughs> so here's this one uh, that my other file has been modified. So this one here was at 146, and you'll see that in here, in the text, in the file um, ID, it was on there. Now let's just go and look at our downloads, and I've got a whole load of ones based on my downloads. And the last one in my downloads, I might actually have to do a refresh on here. Uh, I think that's F5. Um, uh, you'll see that um, it won't be the 146, it'd be something like 144, because I saved this file to a file. Um, through here. So I've got a whole load of files based on here. Now what I could do is that I could get uh, run a little script inside here which would just take all of these files, append them onto a new file and just append them and add all of that information through there and then delete all of those files. So you've then captured that information in just one file if you wanted to do that. But that's running a separate program to be able to do that and, and it's my OBS which is slowing this down. But you see, suddenly I end up with a clutter of files. Now, in some ways, this file and these seconds actually tell you that one's later than the other. But what you'd need to do, these ones here are exactly the same files, 
but they're done on different intervals as you can see it's done on this date it's done on that it would be I think a nice thing I might actually have to add as a feature is not only get the date but also get the time and append that onto the file name just so that you can see the latest ones and just delete the other ones if you're saving over time because there's a few little negatives that I can see on this one at the moment uh, and if we just go back to here the first negative if I just hit refresh that page it's going to lose my clock um, so maybe there's a thing that I've got to reload current page and it just kind of says do you want to reload so it stops you from reloading and you know and uh, and and it can do a stop into here and then just saying that you certainly want to reload before it goes and wipes that data out so that way you don't lose the time on it so you need to do this um, the other thing so the nice thing is that I can actually just go onto another page now I'm just going to zoom into here and just because this one here is there I've actually just got a link to that timer let it open up and I've got another link to that one and it's just going to open up a new project now when it opens up this new project an interesting thing to see what the script is calling it there at the beginning because it's loading it up from the file so it's pulling it up from the file so it's totally brand new so we get a tabula rasa through here so I can now have to choose a project let's just go we're going to go JKL and then if I refresh that you'll see that the project title ends up with the project and that name of the project so here I've got a project over here called ABC and this one shortly when it actually runs through all the JavaScript will actually set up ready to go on JKL so that's now reading so it's just gone through reread the title block and refresh the title block and come through there but it's only done that on the thing so I can now start this other project through here and that time I can actually allocate to a file and it'll allocate it to that particular project um, association so um, if as long as you have those two files on your computer uh, you can go and sorry let's just uh, tab that back again uh, and it's, so as long as you have the stopwatch JS and stopwatch here and I could actually take some of this JavaScript through here move it across into that JavaScript file and uh, so this is just an HTML file you could add CSS to it you can make it aesthetically pleasing um, so that um, it, it ended up being uh, more what you wanted it to be uh, but it's a simple thing if you work from that uh, there, there, there's a few things later on now uh, I'm happy with the way that I've got as a method I might actually go and start using one of these timers and in fact I've got that timer set up um, on onto, uh, on onto as, as a quick key that I can actually just pop up straight away so maybe that's what I use for actually um, when I'm working on a project to starting and refreshing and doing it from using that rather than another timer uh, because I, I do tend to have the browser open through most of the day so if you're browser orientated maybe that's the thing to do as I said I've taken it to the lowest common denominator of saving to a file and it just seems to be a bit awkward to save a file from a browser now you can load up a file so when you load up a file you take your file you load it up and uh, it will then store it in some of that temporary storage or session storage or something like that and then you could save again so there's no reason that you could not add another line of information through here to actually do an append onto one file so you keep on overwriting the same file um, the only problem is it could end up being a little bit messy um, and, uh, and because of the nervousness that I actually have on that particular issue on my older hotkey one when I create my file um, I create two files I create a file and I create a backup file and I append the latest data to both of them so if my main file corrupts I've got my backup files or if I've tweaked my main file and I've still got the backup somewhere that I can actually retrieve some of the information that I've got I don't want to take this too much further at this point in time it was just an exercise to see whether I could get all of those components 
and then keep it so that I can have everything controlled myself rather than all of these uh, things like clocky fine there's three or four that I've done they, they, there's some nice timesheets out there and some of them have apps as well and that's the thing if you tried running this on a uh, mobile device it would be saving the file to your mobile device so you then have to email that file to wherever you are collecting or collating all of your information through here. Now the next step is to actually go and put a database in behind here and actually just have an online database or go and use a free database. But a lot of those you've only got, got to get a good HTTP handshake and do get